My name is Ken Chu, and I am a Master's of Public uh, Management student at the Heinz College at Carnegie Mellon University. Hi, I'm Rene Cuenca. I'm a senior undergrad student studying environmental policy and architecture. Hello, my name is Eleni Catrini, and I'm pursuing a PhD in architecture. Hi, my name is Carly Turkley, and I'm a graduate student in the Master of Public Management at Heinz College. Hi there, my name is Sean Neal Campbell, and I'm a Public Policy and Management Master's student at the Heinz College. We are the Vacant Home Tour. So we conceived of and designed this program in the fall of 2014 to address blight in Wilkinsburg. Wilkinsburg is a first ring suburb of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Today, we'll talk about what blight is and how it's affecting this community. We'll talk about our solution and how we arrived at it. We'll talk about why we think right now is the perfect time for this solution. We'll talk about what we've been doing to implement this program, because in just a few short weeks, on Saturday, May 9th, Wilkinsburg will host the first ever vacant home tour. And finally, we'll talk about the impacts and outcomes we think that we'll achieve with this program. To begin, blight, by definition, is a disease. It's something that makes plants dry up and die. As it pertains to buildings and neighborhoods, this is what it looks like. In Wilkinsburg, roughly 20%, or about 1,800 housing units, are vacant and abandoned. In 2013, the Delta Development Group, funded by the Pittsburgh Foundation, published an in-depth study on the financial and social costs of blight to the greater Pittsburgh region. And what they found and estimated was that the cost to just Wilkinsburg alone was roughly $26.6 million. Now keep in mind, there are only about 15,000 residents in this community. Socially, it speaks of the broken window theory, where a window in a building, broken and left unattended, begins a cycle of decline for the community. It starts with increased criminal activity, fracturization of the community's identity and pride, and degradation of its ability to attract new residents. Since 1950, Wilkinsburg has lost almost 50% of its population. Clearly, for this community, blight has been devastating. As Ken said, the impact of blight is very substantial, but an important question that we had as a team was, why to look at this problem now? Bly has been an issue affecting a number of American cities from Detroit to Pittsburgh, and there are actually a variety of policy tools out there to address blight. Ideas include demolition, the reuse of vacant land, transforming abandoned buildings in new and creative ways, and even economic incentives to get and acquire vacant homes. Even in Wilkinsburg, which is a borough separate from the city of Pittsburgh, there are tax abatement programs, the vacant property recovery program, and even bidding at an auction to acquire a vacant home. So, um, but then we started thinking and asking many more questions. Do these tools really provide new and innovative models to think about blight? And do they ensure that the existing community's needs are met and that they are empowered? Sure, all of these tools aid the process of blight, but only when someone has already made the decision to do something about blight. In other words, there are policy tools out there that target prescriptive change, but they don't engage in a long-term cultural change in the perception of blight, nor do they engage to empower the community. So clearly we saw a gap. Um, so the question that we really had was, how do we compel people to actively want to do something about blight, and how do we involve them as agents of change themselves for the uh, positive change in their community? Rory Sutherland stated that the power of reframing things cannot be overstated. The implication being that sometimes the solution to a problem can be as simple as reframing the problem as something other than a problem. Can blight be bright? Can vacant be vibrant? For our policy approach, we met with members of the community, we toured their neighborhood, and we heard their stories, and we found out that while many of them struggle with the physical decay of their neighborhood, they also talked proudly about community, about their shared community resources, and about a time when people once lived in these homes. So this is how we came up with the vacant home tour. 
We wanted to showcase the vacant buildings of the neighborhood in order for people to discover the values of these homes through both their narratives and those of the people who once lived in them. We hope that this walk-in tour of vacant buildings will be an inspiration for conversation and will bring positive attention to the neighborhood. There are four main components to the vacant home tour, the first one being the docent program. And because the docent program is the foundation of the vacant home tour, let me get to a little bit more detail. We ask the community to help us plan the tour and to volunteer as a house docent, which is basically a tour guide. As a docent, they would sponsor a stop on the tour and they would act as the narrator for the home. We're actively working with them to do the research on the history of those buildings and to collect all the necessary artifacts as a preparation for the tour. We believe that this component will build community agency defining, in defining the future of Wilkinsburg and it will rebuild the community pride that has been lost. The second one is mapping the narrative that actually shows the impact of the lives of the families that lived in those homes in the surrounding neighborhood through a series of posters and banners with historic highlights. Through the Looking Glass is a tool that helps participants really visualize on spot what those buildings looked like in the past and what they might look like in the future. Through a series of old photos printed on uh, transparencies, people can overlay and see what those buildings look like. The resource workshop provides participants with the information and existing tools towards transforming tour properties. Uh, specialists and residents with experience in acquisition of vacant homes will speak and help demystify the process for potential new residents in Wilkinsburg. We believe that this program is very relevant and will be successful because of certain demographic trends that are taking place currently in the greater Pittsburgh area. After decades of decline, the Pittsburgh population not only is increasing, but it's getting younger and more educated. We believe that this demographic shift from our research reflects a greater demand for debt-free housing with a focus on sense of community, thus giving an answer to vacancy. To make this program happen, we partnered with the Wilkinsburg Community Development Corporation and in order to fulfill our aligned missions to improve residential development. We have also partnered with the Pittsburgh Historical Landmarks Foundation as well as the Wilkinsburg Historical Society to help enrich the narratives of these vacant homes. Another partner of ours, the Hosanna House, welcomed us to host multiple community meetings for interested Wilkinsburg residents. This time was designated for residents to design the 2015 tour route, to express interest in becoming a tour docent, and to envision the future of their neighborhood. All we did as the program was provide them with the tools needed. Through these community meetings and exercises and the feedback from the community, here you can see the 2015 tour route that will be used on May 9th. A tour participant will experience the narratives of these properties as well as be reminded of the neighborhood's past through various local landmarks. People are already showing interest in the tour. Based on social media activity, we expect an attendance roughly of 400 people from throughout the greater Pittsburgh area. As more people learn about the vacant home tour, one can see that at $10,000, the program is fairly low in cost and can easily be adapted to other cities. We anticipate if we charge for admission, like a home and garden tour, the program's future will be self-sustainable. How will we measure the long-term success of our program? The vacant home tour has future positive financial and social impact. If only 10% of our anticipated 400 tour participants were to attend the tools and resource workshop, we would increase the number of inquiries the Wilkinsburg CDC receives regarding vacant properties and the vacant property recovery program by 20%. Transitioning just one home has a potential cost saving, oh, the nearly to the nearly 1,800 vacant properties, vacant and abandoned properties, cost the borough a whopping $26.6 .6 million a year. Transitioning just one home has a potential cost savings of $14,000 per year, per, per home. Just two weeks ago, the borough, with the county, asked to partner with us by preparing and, preparing and packaging two of the homes on our existing tour. 
for transition and ease through the vacant property recovery program. For social impact, we ask community members to imagine the imagine what Wilkinsburg would be like five years from now after the program is implemented. And if you bring yourself to our middle example, you see a front page cover story titled, Final Five, Vacancy a Problem No More as People Flock to Wilkinsburg for the Final, remaining, for the final Vacant Properties. Through our activities, community members are, com through our activities, community members are, through our activities, community members realize that Wilkinsburg is a place of opportunity. By engaging with the Vacant Home Tour, Community members are not given tools to do what we think they should do. We empower them to do what they think they should do. And with that, we would like to thank you and open it for questions that you may have. Excuse me. <clears throat> Could you go back three slides? One more. Can you explain that in more detail? I'm trying to understand at 26, how do you derive that, that number? Great, thank you for the question. Um, so in 2013, the Delta Development uh, Group published an in-depth study on the financial impact of blight. And, oh, sorry. And, and what they measured was uh, what, uh, what different costs were a blight was creating for these communities. Uh, and what they measured was uh, direct costs, which includes things like loss of tax revenue, uh, but they also measured things like indirect costs coming from uh, the depreciation of surrounding homes as well. They also measured costs from municipal services, so sending out the fire department to put out fires in these buildings, or uh, code enforcement to make sure that these buildings were safe for the surrounding neighborhoods. So this number, $26.6 million, is a combination of all of those costs and uh, that come from blight. Okay, because I thought you said <clears throat> if just one house was transitioned, that you could somehow derive that number. That's, that's where I'm getting lost. Sure, sorry about that. Um, so yes, at $26.6 million for the borough of Wilkinsburg, which has 1,800 housing units, we calculated that roughly turning one house around or transitioning one house out of vacant and abandoned status essentially um, saves the borough roughly $14,000 or potential cost savings of $14,000 based on the $26.6 million. And you, you spent some considerable time looking at the inventory and the supply of the vacant houses and the status of those, but you don't spend much time talking about where this demand is going to come from. Can you kind of elaborate on it a little bit, please? Uh, yeah. Uh, as, as we mentioned before, we, we, there is an increase in population in the Pittsburgh area over the last uh, years. And because of kind of the, the schools and the universities, it seems there are young people coming in the, in the city that might uh, start thinking of acquiring a, ho a house that it's, it's not too expensive. And actually, they have been a, there is a small population from Ohio that there are recent graduates that are moving into Wilkinsburg, uh, thinking that it's a, it's a good space for them to live, it's cheap, uh, and it has that sense of community, and that's what initially attracted them. So we think that Wilkesburg has the potential to uh, attract new, um, new young residents. Have you factored in the, um, the cost, the additional cost of schools, transportation, support services that, that these families would require based on the housing you're talking about? Uh, Excuse me, what do you mean in the... Oh, f families are going to move into the homes, mm -hmm. that's your goal, and then there are going to be uh, costs associated with that. Those people are going to require transportation, services, hospitals, police, fire. Uh, it might require, in, uh, obviously, increases in those, certainly schools. I would imagine these are larger, older homes, and so you're talking about families moving into them. So there'd be a lot of costs associated with mm -hmm. the addition of the families moving in. Have you factored that in in any way? So we have been working with the Community Development Corporation of Wilkinsburg, and we have been tying some programs that they're already doing in the neighborhood with the vacant, so we think that we're combining them with a vacant home tour. So they are looking at kind of the more commercial um, factor and what are the services you know that the neighborhood needs so they're trying to push development towards that side of bringing all the services that the community needs for the residents and we thought that bringing the vacant home tour in could be a good combination where with the initiatives that they they already have 
Well done, you guys. Um, my question um, tags along with Bill's question, and that is in the community meetings or in your um, developing of the program, are you going to target immigrant families? Are you going to have the home tours in different languages? Um, some of the communities are actually deliberately going after um, families who have moved here from another country. So are you going to have bilingual, you know, Spanish, uh, whatever nationalities are concentrated in that part of Pennsylvania? Um, did you hear that at all when you were doing the community meetings? And, and how are you going to focus on that as a target purchasing population? Definitely. Thank, for you. Thank you for your question. And I'm an immigrant myself and went to Pittsburgh. Um, actually, M Mayor Bill Peduto's, uh, one of his 100 initiatives is to bring immigrants into the city. So that's a very important question. And there's a lot of people moving into Wilkinsburg. And I think our focus really was that ensuring that when those immigrants do come in, they also learn the history of the people that are living there mm -hmm. and creating some sort of connection that will strengthen them. I think a lot of the times, a lot of the problems when you bring immigrants is that they might feel because of language issues or things that they don't belong, they might feel uh, ostracized parts of the community. And we believe that by making a community that is cohesive, um, we can attract those immigrants. And we definitely have thought about um, potentially in the future having you know, Spanish or many other languages in this as part so, of our tour. So Julia, that was a very appropriate question because I lived in Pittsburgh next to Wilkinsburg yeah. as an immigrant. Yeah. I didn't have much of an English issue, but I have accent issue. Uh -huh. Now, my questions are twofold. One is that, isn't this basically a real estate function? What is it that you are doing more than a hungry real estate agent would not do? The second question uh, is that this model is somewhat contradictory. On one hand, we are saying that there are vacant homes because you know, the community is basically run down. On the other hand, we are saying that the younger people are flocking to Pittsburgh and many of them would come to Wilkinsburg. So the question is, uh, if they are there and would like to go in there, wouldn't you think that the real estate market would recognize that as well and would do what you are proposing to do through this particular project? Yes, definitely. Thank you so much for your question. And I think to answer the first half of your question, um, if we are doing the job of our, of our real estate, in a, in a certain sense we are. We are doing the job of our real estate. But what makes us different than other programs addressing specifically blight is that we're coming with the from the um, we're coming from the side of the community. So we're truly um, wanting to have the voice of the community heard. It's a voice of the community that has been. Uh, under power for many years. And our, our goal is to change the perception of life and to empower the community in a way that a real estate probably couldn't. So we want to unearth the history of these homes, but at the same time, connect the neighborhood together in that process. And through the tour and through these historic and landmarks, um, sort of bring the neighborhood up. And at the same time, definitely attracted to new residents and younger families, like you mentioned. Um, our, pro our program is not for profit, so um, we are not sort of seeking uh, this ultimate sort of real estate model, but definitely uh, it could be a, it is definitely a part of a real estate agent to sort of look at these homes and look at the value of them. And I think that um, our strength is that we come from a very different approach. We don't come from that model of the real estate, but uh, the real estate definitely plays a big part on Wilkinsburg specific, as you might know. And if I were to continue just for one more question, is that the whole idea of a dilapidated or abandoned property, what is it that city of Wilkinsburg and or Pittsburgh, what are they doing in terms of uh, uh, charging the people who have abandoned the property? Other areas, such as in Washington, D.C., they have a higher tax rate if you leave your property unattended or not improved. Or uh, basically they would have what I suggest is uh, known as a tax sales, that there will be a public auction. Whoever is willing to pay the taxes uh, would take over the property. Yes. So I wonder whether you examine that, and is that part of this solution? Yeah. So um, just to clarify, the borough of Wilkinsburg, as you might know, is separate from the city of Pittsburgh. The city of Pittsburgh has uh, just implemented its own land bank. Um, 
Um, but Wilkinsburg as a whole runs on a different model in the sense that they don't charge for, most of these houses are tax delinquent for many, many years, but they, they, don't, they don't accumulate extra taxes because they are abandoned. And one of the Im important things that we realized when we were working with the project is that um, all this sort of depreciates the, the prices of all the houses in the neighborhood, the fact that they're delinquent and vacant. So um, no, the, the borough has no system of charging or tax savings because of their vacant. It's much of a bigger problem financially in the borough than it is in the city of Pittsburgh as a whole. I want to follow up on Dr. Gandhi's <clears throat> question. As a mayor, I would want vacant properties to be disposed of in one of two ways. Either it would be reoccupied or it would be demolished, taken out of circulation. Uh, you, you've chosen your language here very carefully. You use the word transition, and I notice in your performance measures, you don't indicate that your project is going to take any responsibility for the final disposition. And what I wanted to know is given that um, the city of Wilkinsburg in the last five years, according to your proposal, um, has done something, you said, 25 homes have been successfully re-engaged for the community. So what is the value, what is the added value that your project brings to what the borough of Wilkinsburg is already doing or what the private sector through the real estate might? What the value are you adding to this whole uh, proposition? So the value that we add is the community empowerment piece. Uh, right now, as you said, uh, Wilkinsburg has transitioned 25 homes, and we are focused on getting uh, potential home buyers as well as the community into the conversation of acquiring these homes and improving these homes. We want to increase the number of inquiries that are occurring, um, and right now that we find that the best way to do that is from the community approach, and that's where we bring that in. So just quickly, you want to increase the number of inquiries. Are you concerned about increasing the number of sales well we believe thank you for that question we believe that uh increasing the number of inquiries will increase the number of transitions that can occur uh by allowing people to know what information is out there to tap into the resources of the wilkinsburg cdc but the sale would still involve a real estate agent or no not necessarily. There are a variety of different ways to acquire these, um, these homes. So the county has created a, project, a program called the Vacant Property Recovery Program. It doesn't involve a real estate agent, but it does involve lawyers, uh, essentially. Um, there's also, th there are sheriff sales. Um, and so there are a variety of different programs that the county, is uh, the county, but also the local level, have created in order to allow people to acquire these buildings. What does a successful application look like? Of our program or of? Right. You've, you've indicated here uh, 25 homes and there have been 22 applications successfully approved. What, what does an application by a, a potential homesteader look like? Sure. So uh, through the Vacant Property Recovery Program, which is the most popular program for people to use, um, they go through, it's a roughly 12 to 18 month process where they uh, have to uh, choose a home that they'd like to acquire. They need to investigate uh, the deeds, uh, so who owns the property, reach out to them uh, and see if they come forward with uh, any kind of response. Uh, they have to assess the home's um, requirements, uh, how much it would cost essentially to make it inhabitable, bring it back up to code. Uh, and then they have to find uh, people who are willing to do that, get a price estimate on that, uh, and they have to show that they have the funds to actually do it. Uh, and then they uh, make the application to the county, and the county goes through the process of uh, uh, vetting all of that and then approving that, that, uh, that transference. And you said it takes about 18 months? Roughly between 12 and 18 months. Aren't you worried about losing people in that, in that time span? You, you've attracted them, you bring them in. I'm, I'm just thinking of your program. You've got May 9th, people are there, they're ready to go. They've got, they, they want to move their family in, they want to start the renovations, they've got their pre-approval for financing, et cetera. Absolutely. And That's a great question. We've been really, really excited because the just two weeks ago, about a week and a half ago, the borough uh, council partnered with the county 
um, to approach us to partner with our program. And what they're going to do is they've actually chosen two of our five homes, and they, they, they're starting right now to package them. So what they're doing is they're actually doing some of the initial vetting process by assessing how much it would cost to turn these homes, who can do the work, and trying to figure out what it would take to bring them up to code so that they're going to fast track them through the vacant property recovery program to make that process easier for people who are interested. So we've been really excited about that. If I, oh, go ahead. I use my quarter. Um, if I might, um, your, your sustainability model, um, I mean, you know, obviously because it's such a low cost to, to generate these things, it looks like it's sustainable. But how do you sustain it long term with no incentive for uh, student volunteers or, I mean, you, you've built nothing in here for personnel or for program administration. It's all just giveaways and banners and stuff. How do you sustain it beyond the first year? Uh, how do you sustain it beyond the enthusiasm of this group? <laughs> Thank you for your question. Um, so through private uh, sponsorships and marketing uh, strategies, we um, anticipate that would be a lot of, um, you know, handling our you know, sustainability long term, as well as uh, ticket sales, as I mentioned. Um, right now as a like a pilot program we're offering this this year's um, tour for free of charge for people to attend so um, we're trying to take in those factors as well and um, we hope i'm actually working with a couple volunteers at the moment trying to build a cohort of people uh, for this year and um, keep in mind as well that for future upcoming uh, vacant home tours. The route will change, um, the community members will change, more will be involved. We also hope that more sponsors in um, Pittsburgh at large will be involved as well um, as this program begins to grow. All right, that's all the time. Can I add uh, a comment? I'm not sure if it was clear from our presentation, but uh, we are partnering with the Community Development Corporation. And when we say about uh, talk about all these things, actually the Community Development Corporation has is willing to adopt the program. And if it's successful in the first year, they will continue it further in the future by doing all the things that we mentioned. Thank you.